Good afternoon and welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church on this Saturday afternoon. I'm Pastor Mark Beatty on behalf of Pastor Bonnie, on behalf of Chaz, all the worship team here, welcome. We are glad that you're with us. Whether you're joining us live in this very moment, it's so precious that we are gathered at the same time and place, or whether you're joining us later, we are so thankful to be able to have this technology, to have this recorded, to be able to give this moment to God and for this to be an avenue for you to come and find and experience worship together with us. So, welcome. Just a few brief announcements for our congregation. Our annual meeting is tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. on Zoom. Just a final reminder for that, please do come so we have a quorum, and also so that you bring your spirit discernment as well with us for our annual planning. Also, our next first and third Saturday outdoor communion service is tonight for the fall, so Right after this service at 6.30, come out in the grass area around the pavilion, and we will have a brief 25-minute service, and the center of that will be Holy Communion. Also, um, we are looking at, the COVID team just met, the Holy Trinity COVID team, uh, COVID team this Thursday. We are looking at the possibility of, again, perhaps opening up, maybe even on Sundays uh, in the near future. But we also want your specific feedback. We've been asking people all along. We've been hoping for feedback and receiving that, but we want to do something a little more formal this time around too. So look for a questionnaire or a survey coming as well. We definitely want your feedback about that, about Sunday, about Saturday, about the state of where we are and faithful worship. And we're hoping actually for some more in-person possibilities of worship coming forward in the near future. Also, one more brief announcement for social ministry. Everyone needs a place to lay their head. And we have pillows we're collecting out in the fellowship hall. There is a box right there. Thank you so much, Carlos. And this is through Simple Needs Georgia. So if you bring brand new pillows still in their wrapping, you can put those in the box there, and then we'll help provide for that social ministry. One of various many things that we do here at Holy Trinity. With that, we are ready to start our worship. So... Um, we have our opening praise song, The Goodness of God. Oh, you 
Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Your word says that it's your kindness that leads us to repentance. We thank you so much, God, that you are a God of graciousness and goodness and kindness and mercy. And that your mercy is fresh and new every day. And we gather tonight at home and here in this uh, building to worship you, to praise you and thank you for your goodness, to bless you for your kindness to sing your praises because of your mercy. So in your name we pray and we give you praise tonight. Amen. Amen. We continue together with our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice The splendor
we continue together in faith with our confession. God of mercy and love, forgive, forgive us for turning away from you, for putting other things first. first in our lives, for the things we've done and the things we've left undone, for not loving you with all our hearts or our neighbors as ourselves. Heal us, forgive us, and strengthen us to walk in the light of your love again. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. In his name, receive the good news that you and all who turn back to God are forgiven, blessed, and renewed to live and love again. Amen. Tonight we have a special treat for you. I want to go ahead and invite up one of our former youth, now young adults, Kirk Lundhagen, who is now a college student. He's going to have a temple talk for us, a little bit about what Holy Trinity has meant to him. And of course, we have started now our stewardship season, continuing to build a culture of generosity. We have so many ways that this church gives and serves so generously. And we want to hear a little about the youth ministry, too, and what all that has meant for Kirk. So we look forward to hearing from Kirk now. So I've had the pleasure of calling Holy Trinity my home for the past 15 years about. And this congregation has honestly meant the world to me. Um, it's honestly changed my life and my relationship with God. But I really want to speak on the youth group and the youth ministry that we have here. It is an unbelievable organization. And I really recommend that everyone gets involved with it because it's completely changed my life. Um, it's such a great organization, and I can't tell you how powerful the relationships I've made through it are. Um, all the leaders, all the youth, incredible people, but it's incredible how we get to really interact with each other to spread the word. Um, the greatest things about it are the missions we've gone on. We've gone to Puerto Rico, Detroit. We've done a lot smaller missions on Martin Luther King Day, but we really get to grow in our faith in helping people. Um, the experiences are incredible, and you really get to see God's work in action through these missions. And it's through the congregation that we are able to do all of this, and it's honestly one of the most life-changing things I've done. My relationship with God would not be the same if I haven't been a part of this organization. And it's just, it's really unbelievable. That's the best word I can describe. But my relationship with God has grown so much through these wonderful people, and I'm very, very, very glad to call them my friends my family, and I'm glad to call this my home. Thank you so much, Kirk, and also thank you for your ministry and giving so much here as one of the faithful youth for all these years, too, for the mission trips, for the service, everything you've done as well for us. Thank you so much. now I will read the word of the day. This is brought to you by or out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 1 through 10. Paul and Savanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction just as you know what kind of person we prove to be among you for your sake. And you become imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia, Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, 
Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. And this is the word of the Lord. Grace to you and peace. This sermon tonight is a letter to Holy Trinity. It's a reminder of who and whose we are and of the Spirit moving here in this place. It was the letter to the first Corinthians we just heard from Megan that reminded me of well, what would a letter to Holy Trinity be like? Here was Paul writing to the first Thessalonians there in that first century. And now in the year 2020, what is God's word for us? And of course, we know in scripture that God's word is also a living word. And I believe that many of the words from 1 Thessalonians are actually words in a letter to Holy Trinity. So I've taken out, all these are quotes, but I've taken out quotes here and there from the first chapter and then near the end also the fifth chapter. And I do believe through the living word of God, this is not just a letter to the 1 Thessalonians. This is a letter to you, the congregation of Holy Trinity. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, the whole letter begins with grace and peace. How is Holy Trinity filled with grace? I think each time, and we just had that confession together too, each time we come together and confess our sins to God and we know that our Lord is forgiving us, we are reminded of that cross of Christ that we are forgiven. That is grace. Every time we hear the good news in sermons, we hear God's grace. Every time we come to the table and receive Holy Communion, it is grace. And what about the work of faith and the labor of love and the steadfastness of hope? When I think of the work of faith, I think of Sunday school. I think of confirmation. I think of our middle school youth and confirmation in that first little part of high school, and they're they're taking this work of faith. They're taking all that has been taught to them through their baptism and growing up in the church, and they're learning to be that point where it's no longer just the pastor teaching them or their parents teaching them, but them also saying yes to their baptism and to their faith and becoming spiritually an adult here in the church. That is a work of faith. I think every time there's a Bible study here, Sunday Bible study, Wednesday Bible study, that is a work of faith. But it's not just what happens here in this building, in this holy place as well when we go from our head and spirit and heart out to our hands as well. Every build and every nail that's driven for Habitat for Humanity here at Holy Trinity is a work of faith. Every time we feed someone or provide food for must ministries, that also is a work of faith. Yes, Holy Trinity, this letter is to you. And what are our labors of love? Some of my favorites I think of are the quilts and the prayer shawls, each one made in prayer and each one made from the heart, some to go to people here locally, some to our members, some to others, and some with the quilts going all across the world as a labor of love to reach out to a fellow brother or sister, another child of God. And what is our our steadfastness of hope? Some of the ways I see that are in our angel tree, which we have and all the little ornaments that each represent a child or a family that if we didn't have gifts for them might not have Christmas gifts at all that year. And just here in Cobb County and to reach out in that way, giving hope. I see hope in the Cobb County diaper day. It seems so silly that that whole challenge event we had this last fall with Christ Lutheran Church. And between our two congregations, we got more than 20,000 diapers. And you think, well, what about diapers? But 
Those are for moms and young families where here in the area in Cobb County where they may have been deciding, well, are we going to pay our bills or get diapers this time? Are we going to um, pay the rent or get diapers this time around? So it was also, I believe, providing steadfastness of hope. And then this past hunger walk that wasn't, the one that got canceled because of the pandemic just before it happened, and yet we'd had a record number of people sign up and a record number of giving, though that giving still went for that hunger walk. And you, the congregation, served as Christ-like leaders and ministers, providing hope to hungry people and helping them be fed. Yes, this letter about the steadfastness of hope is also a letter to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. It continues, For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that He has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in the power of the Holy Spirit with full conviction. And where do I see perhaps the power of the Holy Spirit with full conviction? One of the places I see that is in our Monday school sisters, where you have over 50 women gather around in the upper room there, and not just from Holy Trinity, but we have Catholics and Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians joining us too, all one group together. And yes, I'm sure some of the women there have whatever kind of things they have as pastors do too in our own lives. We sin, we fall short. But in that particular setting, there is something more than the group of women together. There is something higher. There is something more sacred. There is something more holy. And it's beautiful to watch and be a part of. And I've been so thankful to have been a visitor there more than once and to, to walk with them together. Because when Monday school gathers, what I see is a witness of the power of the Holy Spirit with full conviction. I also see that with our Bible on Tap men's group, not necessarily in the actual bars they've gone to when they're drinking, but when they say things like, you know, just having this fellowship and just reading a verse is not enough. We need to have our hands involved with our faith too, and have done things like created a, a youth church bus, right, for the youth to use, and keeping that up, having the pavilion have power to it, having houses where members have had uh, different mobility needs and providing wheelchair access and things like that where they have built themselves. Yes, absolutely, I see the power of the Holy Spirit in those actions with full conviction. Our letter continues. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. How has Holy Trinity been imitators of the Lord? I think the youth mission trips are a great way. Our youth have been ambassadors. They have been missionaries. They have been ministers to go to Puerto Rico and various other places and to be able to serve in the name of Christ. I do see us as imitators of Christ in our youth mission trips and with our congregation supporting these trips. Luther Ranch Ministries, just down the road here, when this church, and this was before my time, but when this church gave over $125,000 to help renovate that house that would become the retreat center, the Holy Trinity House at Luther Ranch that I used as a pastor with the retreat group, a young adult retreat group in another congregation before I got called here, and so many others have used that place and that setting and the investment we've made, that's that Christ-like ministry. And also... Another heartfelt one, and there's so many, I could talk for hours about this, but not too long back, several years ago now, First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, we knew we couldn't change the world, we know we can't do everything, but when we heard about that mass shooting, and it was preached about here, and our hearts reached out for them, each year now we've chosen to do something to reach out to members of two families who were terribly affected by that tragic shooting on that foreboding and, and terrible day. And we are just now, even though we can't all sign the cards like we did last year, we had a whole congregational signing of these big cards, our social ministry committee is just now getting the gift cards and cards out to mail to First Baptist Church. It's a little thing, 
but it's something. And it's a Christ-like reaching out that we're doing again this year, this year, and we'll do next year, and we plan to do for years to come still as those children of those families grow. Our letter continues. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you. How is Holy Trinity a welcoming place? I think about our Christmas pageant where we have members with all these youth and other children who have come from other places in the community to be part of that pageant to share the good news of the Christmas story and families who have come back and returned for that and said, thank you so much for letting us be a part of that. The same thing happens with Vacation Bible School as we welcome so many children from our community and families as well. And it happens at the Easter egg hunt, which we just had the largest Easter egg hunt this last year before the pandemic. We had a great, huge breakfast with Santa as well. It happens in Oktoberfest as we welcome all these people from our community. It happens in Trunk or Treat. With all these things, we welcome others. And perhaps one of the most beautiful and holy ways that we have welcomed others was just here also in 2020, in January. Before things had shut down, we were the last church now to have hosted the synod-wide Martin Luther King Jr. service. And we had various other people, including those coming from predominantly African-American Lutheran congregations here in Atlanta. And we welcomed everyone with open arms and had a beautiful spread to feed everyone and just to welcome everyone in this place. And the comments that we got back from people were just humbling how gracious they were and, and how, how warmly they were received. That is this congregation. That's our call. Obviously, on some days, we're not at our best. Every one of us is cranky. Every one of us has issues going on at times. But our calling is to be that welcoming congregation in so many ways we are. This letter is to you, Holy Trinity, a truly welcoming congregation. And how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus. How have we turned from idols to God? Every time we faithfully gather for worship here in this place, we turn away from the idols of the world and back to God. And yes, we haven't been in person the whole time. We came back until the numbers for COVID went really high again. We were back for a month. We looked to come back again. But there has not been one single week since the beginning of the pandemic, that we have not had a live worship service here in this place, either live in person or Facebook Live. We have worshiped faithfully our God. And every time we come in here and every time you join this worship, we turn away from those idols, those things that would entrap us and have us put them first before God. And we put God first again. And professing Jesus Christ, who is raised and will return again, every time we get close to Holy Week and Easter Sundays and Saturdays, yes, we profess God, but it happens every single weekend too. Every single weekend of worship is an Easter service where we profess this. And it's not just in the worship itself, but imagine this. Just in the last few months, here's some of what we had. We've had bells and cello and piano and organ and keyboard and harp and bass and guitar and drums and timpani and trumpet and violin and voice, all these things to praise God and to put God first here in this place. Now, going forward, where do we go from here, Holy Trinity? Because this letter is for us to and this brings us now to chapter 5 with the exhortations and the benediction. So where will we go from here? And I believe these words picked out, which again are all quotes from 1 Thessalonians, they are also a letter to you, to us now, a letter to Holy Trinity. So I pray that you hear them and listen to them, receive them in your heart, remember them. At this time especially, considering how things are in our nation, listen to how this begins. Be at peace among yourselves. Encourage the faint-hearted. Help the weak. 
Be patient with all of them. See that you do not repay evil with evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Do not quench the Spirit. Pray for us. Greet all of the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. Maybe that's one we won't do exactly the same. <laughs> It'll be perhaps with the sign of peace or a virtual hug, but still symbolically with that holy kiss. And finally, always, always, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. We just finished with that word of grace, and the whole letter began with grace and peace be to you. So now we transition also to this hope, to this longing, and to this certainty through Christ of a peace that passes all human understanding. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace together wherever we are. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. We continue now also together in faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, the almighty and all-powerful creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. I believe Jesus suffered at the hands of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Three days later, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, where he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And one day he will return to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness and your grace. And we praise you and make your name known. We adore you and we give you our whole lives knowing that you are in total control and we can trust you. We pray tonight, Lord, together the words that we've been taught by you in Scripture that says... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
may God go ahead of you to guide you, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. Amen.